Welcome back, my dear sweet friends. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. This is the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are so happy you have joined us. We are an early retirement debt and mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York. We're here today to bring you what we hope is an encouraging, helpful, and frugal video. We are going to talk finances just a little bit. We're gonna talk savings accounts, sinking funds, we're going to see Paul's endeavors in the kitchen, and we're gonna show you how Paul and I, for my birthday, did no spend, and it worked out really, really well. So sit back, relax. If you are new here, hit that button and subscribe if you haven't. We would love to have you be part of our frugal family. So let's get into the video right away. The first thing we wanna talk about is the word sinking funds. So many of you after our last video kept using the word sinking funds. We're old school, or maybe we're new school, I don't know. What do we call sinking funds? Savings account. When people said, well, don't you have sinking funds? I'm like, of course. What we had said in the last video is, before our high spend months, which are January and September. January, we have our land taxes due, which are thousands. We have whatever increase is in our health insurance for the year because we do pay for our own health insurance. And we also have home insurance on this house and home insurance on the little house in South Carolina. So January and the beginning of February, we get walloped. So I said the month before that, we are going to do a no spend month. And I think you all thought that we scrambled around to get the money to pay for our taxes and insure that. There's no way we could do that, none. Bulls Pension doesn't bring in enough money on a, on a monthly basis to pay all that at once. So I wanted to clarify a couple things. Number one, if you look back at any of my videos budgeting, going back to 2020, we talk about how we budget. And our budgeting is no different than anyone else. We just don't use the word sinking fund. We use the word savings accounts. And I will link a budgeting video down below for you. One of our earliest going back to 2020. And what we do is just like everybody else. See how much money we have coming in every month. Stable income, which is Paul's pension. And then we have our YouTube money, which we try not to depend on to pay our bills because that fluctuates and that could be gone tomorrow if YouTube decides, hey, listen, we don't want your channel here. So we don't depend on the YouTube finances to pay our monthly bills. Then what we do is we track everything and we've been tracking our spending from a pack of gum to our land taxes for many years now. And you can see videos about that down below. I will link it. Then what we do is we take our expenses because you have fixed expenses and you have fluctuating expenses. Fixed expenses are those things that are necessary every month. Your mortgage, our health insurance, home insurance, car insurance, things like that. Those things have to be paid. Then you have fluctuating bills as well, which would be maybe your entertainment, things like that. And then what we do is we divide the total by 12. And when Paul's pension comes in every month, we take that amount out and put it into a savings, which then we flip over into our checking account when it comes time to write those bills. We just don't use the word sinking funds. We call them savings accounts. And people could argue that a savings account is different than a sinking fund because a savings account is not usually designated for anything. Well, our savings accounts are most definitely designated. We designate them to pay our bills, all the necessary expenses we have. When we say we're doing a no spend month before our high payout months, the way things are going now, everything is increasing. 
So when we do a no spend month before our big payout months, yes, we have that money, everything is paid. But the problem is the increases. Our land taxes in January went up 8% this year. So you get no warning for that. Here it is. You have an increase of 8%. It's due in 30 days. Our health insurance went up 12% in January. Here it is. You need to pay an extra 12% for the rest of the year every month. So these no spend months just add a little bit extra to pad any kind of increases we are seeing. And it works really well for us. To those of you who thought we we're scrambling to pay thousands of dollars by not spending for one month on extra things, there is no way financially we could ever do that. We have a budget, we separate every month what is due and that goes into savings accounts. Now, those savings accounts that we have designated for our bills, we do not touch. Because if you start pulling from these, then guess what? You're going to be in the red somewhere else. And we have CDs that we don't look at, we don't think about. Now, we did transfer one of our CDs into a savings account because the interest rates were higher. But again, it's with the CDs, we don't even think about them. Our whole goal is to never touch our CD savings for our everyday bills. Because once you start dipping into there, not good. That's, that's a whole nother area. That money is for emergencies, for the future, for whatever may come up. So that is not touched. And Paul and I, we like to live below our means, meaning our spend out is less than we're bringing in. In basic, simple terms, you take your expenses, divide them by 12, and that's what you put away every month. So when those big bills creep up, you have got the money to pay in full at the end of that month. Anything extra you have, is a little bit of padding that you can add to those accounts. So I hope this clarifies that just a little bit. Another thing I wanna talk about is again, the rising prices of food. What I want to reiterate, please, is don't deplete your supplies. Those of you who are doing these eat out of your pantry, eat out of your fridge, freezer, we need to be careful because of the supply chain that we are keeping everything stocked. Stock up on those loss leaders, those advertised low, low prices at the supermarket. Make sure you're rotating your canned goods and replenishing when they're on sale. Because as wonderful as these challenges are to no spend, low spend on food, we need to be careful of the supply chain. We need to be careful that we don't deplete, that when we go to look something, hence the saltine crackers from the last video, they're nowhere to be found. Saltine crackers are not a big deal, but you want to make sure you are keeping your food supply stocked. Not hoarding, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying enough where if we can't find items, we're okay because we have surplus in our homes. We have alternatives to items that we can't find in the stores in our homes. Very, very important. I hope this was helpful. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're gonna show you what we did for my no spend birthday. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for the cards I got in the mail for the DMs I got over on Instagram. And if you're not following us over on Instagram, please do so. It's one word, frugal money saver. You will find out what we do on a daily basis, the little stories on top. And I also wanna thank you for the emails, for everything. You guys are the best for remembering me. I appreciate you so, so much. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You always humble me. You always surprise me. And it's amazing. One of the best gifts I got, honestly, was I checked this morning. I think I'm 
two subscribers away from 19,000 subscribers. Now, maybe when this views, two people would have jumped on board and maybe I will have hit that 19,000, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 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 there's nothing to say because I think you know our hearts. Thank you. Okay, before I get all bushy, let's get into my no spend birthday, see what we did, see how we spent it, and share it with you. So here you go. Well, any of our outdoor plans for my birthday didn't happen. It was snowy and cold, but my brother and his wife came over, brought gifts, balloons, just lovely. My niece spoiled me with an entire Disney gift pack. Amazing. So I wanted to make Emmy a cake for her birthday. So I went into the uh, pantry and I found this Duncan Hines Perfectly Moist Strawberry Supreme Cake Mix. We'll put some icing on it and it's gonna be a fun cake to try. Now what I'm going to do to step it up a little bit, make it a little bit more tastier, instead of using a cup of water, I'm going to be using a cup of milk. Instead of a third cup of oil, we're going to do a third cup of melted, cooled, non-salt butter. We're going to use the three eggs. So let's get this mixed up. So here's the cake mix. Bear with me guys, I'm not a cook. Now I'm going to add in the milk, three eggs, and the melted butter that takes place of the oil. Okay, the box is telling me here to put all the ingredients in the large bowl, mix it at low speed for 30 seconds, then beat it for medium speed for two minutes. So let's try this out. I guess that's about as low as it goes. Okay, that was 30 seconds. Scrape down the bowl. This is tricky. I don't know how you guys do this. Okay, now it says to mix it at a medium speed for two minutes. So let's try that. Two minutes is up. Let's see what this stuff looks like. Ooh, it's got little chunks of fruit, huh? Hope it's real. I'm being really good, everybody. I'm just standing and watching. I'm trying not to help. Trying I... not to laugh. No. <laughs> I know, I know. I think you're doing amazing. Yeah, this is out of my, uh, this is out of my comfort zone here. I'm nervous, I don't know what I'm doing. I can wire a house, but I can't do this. Look, I'm covered in it. Now we're gonna put this in our cake pans. So I greased my baking pans. Now let's put some of this mix in here. Trying to make this even so the cake comes out even. I think you're doing great. Can't wait to read the comments. Now you guys know you're gonna have to leave comments. I've never had this strawberry cake. We bought it when we were in South Carolina last time. And it smells like little strawberries, like fresh strawberries. So now I have a uh, oven that's preheated at 350 degrees and it says to cook this thing for 15 minutes. Okay, two eight inch pans between 24 and 29 minutes. 350 degree oven, got it preheated, center rack, here it goes. Okay, well after 25 minutes, the toothpicks in the center came out clean. So now it's cooling for 15 minutes on a wire rack. Wait till she sees this. She's gonna make me cook every night. And now I took them out of the pan, placed them back on the rack until it's cool enough to frost. So right now they're still warm. I'm going to take some of the strawberry preserves that we have in the refrigerator and I'm going to heat it up on the stove, melt it down, and I'm going to spread it as a layer on the top of this cake. Ooh, good idea. What, where'd you get that? I thought of it in my head. That's good. That'll be yummy, actually. That's a great idea. Okay, so, so I warmed this up in the pot, not hot, just enough to make it spreadable. See that? This was four tablespoons of strawberry preserves. That looks amazing. Okay, now let's make the icing. Paul, I just pulled, um, I don't mean to upset you, look at this though. I pulled the tin foil off, look at that. What do you think that is? That's gotta be Dixie. Yeah, <laughs> I think Dixie took the cover off, licked it, put the cover back on when we weren't looking. No doubt about it. Looking through the pantry, I found this frosting. I'm gonna put this 
in the mixer to make it fluffy, and I'm gonna add a teaspoon of almond extract, to give it a little bit of extra flavor, whipped it. So now I'm going to put it on the cake. Time to frost. Paul took a little bit of the extra icing, put it in a plastic sandwich bag, and added a drop of red food coloring. So I snipped the corner of the bag so we can get a little bit of icing out. Let's see how this works. I hope it works. Well, not really. That's pretty. It's like <laughs> lace. Look, everybody. All right, so I'll just go around. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. You must have just done two little holes. Well, it's pleated, so maybe when I cut it, it only made two holes. This is beautiful. I'm sorry for the shadows that you're seeing. Paul, this is like super cool. Look at that, huh? Look at this, everybody. <laughs> Bullseye cake. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Paul worked so hard on my beautiful cake that I said to him, we have some delicious leftover chicken pot pie in the freezer. Let's heat that up. And then he put together a delicious green salad for me. I had my homemade croutons. I put a little cheese on it. I didn't have to cook. He didn't have to cook after making that amazing cake. So we are just blessed and we are going to enjoy this. It was such a blessed day. And I know I get comments, just spend your money. Why are you not just spending your money? Enjoy life. And I don't get that. And I always say it. We do enjoy life. We enjoy it every day. We are thankful for it every day. And the secret is that we have found is you don't need a tremendous amount of money to enjoy life, to have a good time, to be with those you love. You don't. And I think most of you who watch this channel get that. And it is the biggest blessing we can give ourselves is to be thankful and appreciative. Thank you again for spending this time with us. If you are new here, click that subscribe button. Come on in. Be part of our frugal family. Please give this a big thumbs up. And the question for today is, what are you all doing for Valentine's Day next week? Even if you are single, you should be your own Valentine and do something special. Nothing extravagant, nothing expensive, just something that pleases you and makes your heart smile. So leave us down below what you're doing for Valentine's Day next week, what you're cooking, if you even celebrate, Whatever it might be, we'd love to hear from you and be encouraged by you. We ask you to be safe. We ask you to stay well. We love you. We appreciate you. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, bye-bye. <laughs>